Ideally, the design of the database should not be occurring whilst you're in Access. In reality, the database should be designed, written out, a schema agreed, before you go anywhere near Access. So here we have, for example, my clients, which is a database we've created. It has no objects within it, but I know I want a database to be called my clients. But I then had to design that database elsewhere. Now there are various ways of doing that. A pen and a paper is what I tend to use, scribble down to get an idea of the objects and the fields that I'm likely to need. Now we could do that in Word. And we have a file in the working folder called database plan, which has a small makeup of two tables, TBL clients and TBL sales. Now when we're calling objects within access, we tend to prefix them with a three letter prefix. In the case of tables, that's TBL. For queries, it will be QRY. For reports, RPT, and for forms, FRM. The reason for that is so that when you see that object out of its context, so not in the table section of Access, you still know that it's a table. Within each of those tables, so for example, TBL clients, I would then list the fields that I think I'm going to need. So I know I'm going to need a primary key. So that in this case is client ID, and I've put a little star next to it to indicate to me that that's the primary key. I then have a field for the client's name, their address, line one and two, their town, their zip, their country, and the date the client was added. I'm also going to need some other fields here. Now you'll notice there is a pattern, and that pattern is I'm always using the word client as the first part of the field name. Again, the reason for that is very similar to the TBL prefix, in that if I see this field out of context, I know it's table it's come from. So by prefixing it with client, I know the field has come from the client table. Now I'm also going to need a couple of other fields here, client active, so I know whether this is a current client, and then two fields that I tend to add to all my tables, and that is a flag field, client flag. There's simply an on off field that I can use to flag, in this case, clients to do something with, even if it's temporarily, and then client notes, which is a notes field that really is going to contain data that doesn't really fit into any of the other fields I've created. And we can do the same for sales. I think we've got most of the fields there, but I'm going to add in sale. Notice that all of these fields have a prefix sale. I'm going to add in sale flag so I can flag individual sales and also sale notes in case I need to add any further information about a particular sale. I have its value, I have its date, and I have the client that made the sale. I know what I don't have. I don't have the employee that made the sale. So sale rep. So once I'm happy with the structure, which I would do in this case here in Word or on a piece of paper, potentially I would sleep certainly once or twice on each of these options because to add in fields at a later stage in the database is actually quite difficult because you've then got the knock-on effect of restructuring queries, forms and reports to allow that field to take place. So you really need to try and get this nailed at a really early day. So this is my database plan. I've added new fields in. and I'm quite happy that I think I have everything now. At that stage, I'm ready to go back to Access. So in Access, I create my database. I then start to add my tables. So to add a table, I go to Create, Table Design, and I'm given the blank table in design mode where I need to know the field name, which is Client ID. The data type for that field, I know that I'm going to make that field my primary key. So I'm going to make its data type auto number so that every new client gets a new unique number. And then I'm going to set that as the primary key. So I get a little key in the margin. I then need the client name, which is a short text field, 255 characters. That's long enough for anybody's client name that I know. I then got client add one. Again, a short field is fine. Client add two, another short text field, client town and client zip, short text, client zip, another short text, client country, short text, client date added, not a short text field, this is going to be a date field, so in the drop list, I can choose date slash time, client active. Now that's simply yes or no, and there is a yes, no field for that. Client flag, again, that's a simple yes, no field, either they're flagged or they're not. And then client notes. Now, short text is probably not enough for a notes field, 
So we'll need to go with a long text. And that has an unlimited, from a database point of view, unlimited storage potential. So those are my fields. I've given them the same name as I did in my design, so in my Word document. Chosen the correct data type, I've set my primary key. I can then save my table. I'm going to call it TBL clients. Okay, the table then appears in my table list. And if I were to double click, it would open the table in data entry mode so that I'm ready to go. So that's my first table created. So that's create table design, and I can create my second table, which is the sales table, sales ID. This I know is my primary key. And again, I'm going to make it an auto number to let access do the work and give it a number. Set that as the primary key. And then add my other fields. So sales value, which is not a short text field. It's a currency field. Sales date, which again is not a short text field. It's a date time field. Sales client which is going to be a long number field. So let's go with number, because that will be the ID of the client. Sales rep, again, a number field. We'll have the reps number there. Now you'll notice that I'm using the prefix sales, but in my drawing, I used a mix of sales and sale, or trying to keep some consistency. I'm going with sales all the way down. So sales flag, that's my yes, no field sales notes is my long text field. So this is the sales table. I'm using a nice prefix for each of the fields. So if I see any of those fields out of context, I know which table they're from. I then need to save the table with a sensible name of TBL sales. So I'm using the TBL prefix to tell myself it's a table if I see it out of context. And OK. That saves the table into the table list and double clicking will then open in data entry mode where I'm ready to start entering some sales information. So I can close that as well. So that's creating two tables. Firstly, the design is done. So I need to do that even if it's on paper, handwritten, agreed, accepted that those are the fields that I want within those tables. Then in access, having created the database to hold all of my objects, I could then create the tables using create table design and go ahead and add in the fields, the data types, and then save the table with its primary key set with its sensible name. And it will appear in my table list on the left hand navigation pane.